Hello, I'm Bob Ray, and we're in New Delhi, the capital of India. India is a country of breathtaking diversity. There are over a billion people living here. 18 official languages, hundreds of dialects, all the major religions of the world. And yet, despite its diversity and for all of its, its great geographic size, India is one single unified country. How do they do it? Well, part of the answer is because India is a federal country. Like many other modern countries, India was created out of a colonial past, its territory defined by the British Empire. In 1947, the vast Indian subcontinent was as complex as it was diverse. The country consisted of several British provinces and 600 princely states. Independence was a dramatic event. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. For the founders of the country, the unity and integrity of India itself was at stake. A constitution adopted two years after independence has remained the keystone of the Indian Federation. There was never any doubt or apprehension that India would not be a federation. So it was just natural that uh, the constitutional fathers would adopt this principle and it was there. There was hardly any debate whether India should be a federation or not. It was adopted. The constitution created 14 states and six union territories based largely on colonial boundaries and princely states. A few years later, India began reorganizing its states, redrawing borders to reflect linguistic and cultural homelands. The process has continued, and today there are 28 states in the federation, the three newest ones were created as recently as 2000. Every state has the right to determine its own language policy. Here in the southern state of Tamil Nadu, Tamil is spoken, and the official business of government is conducted in Tamil. The constitution provides for uh, a formula under which uh, every state can have its own official language and of course Hindi is the national language. We have a three language formula, the English, the Hindi and the regional language. The state of Karnataka chose to adopt its historic name to express its particular cultural identity. Karnataka is also the home of the Kannada language. But there are many minorities within this state, and a number of languages are used here. So these are the Kannada papers Malayalam, Tamil, Hindi, Urdu, and English. As far as uh, religious, and linguistic minorities are concerned, the constitution also took note of their presence in large numbers in different states. And so in Article 29 and Article 30 of the constitution, uh, guarantees were provided to minorities to set up their own educational institutions uh, so that they can, ma they can maintain their own cultural diversity and plurality. In this classroom in the city of Bangalore, girls are honing their computer skills in the Urdu language. You know, states are evolving their own systems to accommodate the diversities. Uh, it's not that there is a steel frame within which you have to work. Uh, for instance, uh, if uh, in one state there are uh, Hindus, uh, there are Muslims, there are uh, Buddhists, uh, there are Sikhs or Christians, uh, uh, there will be an attempt to accommodate everybody uh, in uh, electoral process. 
But nowhere is the diversity of India more evident than in its capital. Here in Delhi, you will find every language and cultural community of the country. This Bengali school is in Delhi, but the homeland of the Bengali people is hundreds of kilometers to the east in the state of West Bengal. There are large Bengali communities all over the country. At this school, you get a sense of the complexity of the Indian national identity. Uh, all of the, all the students are Bengali over here, so we prefer to speak in Bengali. But since it's an English medium school, so we have to stick to English only. Uh, sometimes we speak in English, sometimes in Bengali. And because this is Delhi, so uh, Hindi being our national language, frequently we speak in Hindi. One reason federalism is working in India is because the states have significant powers in their own domains and also strong representation in the federal parliament. As well, over time, India has developed strong grassroots institutions of democracy. At this village council meeting, many important local decisions are made. There are thousands of these councils all over India, with millions of council members. This relatively recent addition to India's federal system is an especially important way of including the mass of rural people and women into the political framework. Nowhere in the world you can see this uh, kind of a plural society. You find uh, all kinds of systems and uh, everything you think you can imagine in the world is here. 